Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> Here we go. Right, good morning everybody. It is the third and fucking better be final day of uh, doing the engine on this Mini. Last night, as you see, we left the we left the episode yesterday on we ha we have to get a new a new rocker we have to get a new rocker arm because ours was just the little plastic thing that broke. Uh, anyway, so I put it on my story. I actually asked uh, some people who uh, are actually good friends now. Mod and Mini. So huge thank you to Mod and Mini on Instagram. They've got a garage up in Chelmsford. Uh, they started off doing mainly like Mini Cooper S bits, but now they do a little bit of everything. And they had a spare rocker shaft. So obviously that's the one that we took off the car and that's the little issue there, the little plastic cover. They, they had a whole rocker shaft. So uh, I have put it on this morning, but uh, obviously the garage been a little bit busy, so I've not had time to film. So I've just put it on. Uh, I was debating whether to just use the whole shaft or just to uh, replace the one rocker. But I just thought, I just may as well use the whole shaft. That's all balanced together and stuff and they've all been machined together and that's come out of one car and it got less miles. So I'm going to use that one and then give him that one for spares. So I hope that's okay, Modern Mini. I've just done that. So that's where we're at now. Uh, about to tighten down the uh, the rocker shafts uh, and put the uh, cam sprocket back on. And then we can start basically putting it back together. Uh, I do need to wait for Adam because little Adam, there's like three Adams who work here. Little Adam is going to help me up with the timing. So I need to wait till little Adam gets back um, because... I didn't mark the sprocket, and um, we should have done, but we thought it was all changing the timing chain and all that, but we're not going to be. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I have got instructions in here, and it is pretty self expansion so we've, we've put it to top dead centre. Uh, there is a little arrow on the, cam sh on the camshaft sprocket, there, uh, and the instructions tells us where that arrow needs to be pointing, uh, and that arrow needs to be pointing this way. So, yeah, it is pretty self expansion but it is timing. I don't want to fuck it up. So I'm going to wait for little Adam. I said it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. So I'm going to wait for little Adam to get back before we do that. But I'm just going to make sure everything's ready for little Adam. And then, you know, if everything goes well today, nothing breaks. Touch fucking wood. Foam is wood, kind of. Uh, then, yeah, it'll be running today. Right, guys, Adam isn't here. So I'm actually gonna, just going to give it a go myself. Uh, engine at top dead center on number one cylinder. This is number one cylinder. We, we put it up to uh, top dead last night. Uh, just by putting a screwdriver in the bottom of in the spark plug hole and just pushing this pushing it up and then when the screwdriver starts to come back down just go back a little bit top dead center now this is where it gets difficult because obviously you have colored chains on a new chain you'll have like colored links they're like bright links they're like a link to the chain which are light and everything else they've got a march up with the notches but obviously we haven't got that because we've got the old chain in and we haven't actually removed the chain off the crank off the crankshaft sprocket so they should be okay so now all we really have to do is make sure that that mark is in the right position um, <clears throat> so I basically just put the notch around about two o'clock three o'clock about two o'clock and I've actually counted on this picture how many chains are visible so you've got 11 full chains visible and then a half chain on each side and I've looked at that picture from this angle there's half chain visible on the, on the right half chain visible on the left and there is actually 11 chains there so I've put that sprocket on there I'm just bolting it up for the time being not doing it you know not putting it mega tight but I think that should be in time and then you need to make sure that it's actually sat in the guide rails so that needs to be bolted down and make sure the chain's actually in the guide rails and then we can put the tensioner in and then we can start putting it back together but as I say, I'm just waiting until um, I get back just to double check so the last thing I want is it being out of time <laughs> right Adam said that pretty much looks lined up he said tighten everything down um, and when the tension is in we'll just double check it all again so I'm just gonna go middle out. That's it. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so just putting everything back together with the chain. I actually just looked down here and I'd just seen that the chain was actually just off the guide rail a little bit. So that was a bit of a finiddle I have to do because I didn't want to unbolt all the cam, uh, the cam and that again. Uh, so I just took the guide rail off a little bit and just got a screwdriver and just pushed it back on. So I've got to deal with this um, bloody tensioner now. Luckily I've got a new one. Um, obviously the old one's there and I would have had to compress it, but this is the new one. So I just slip it in there and then just go around the back of the engine again and try and find that horrible, horrible, horrible bit. Yeah, I'm just going to do some revolution, just to make sure it's turning. Um, if it wasn't in time, it would be, it would, you'd, it, it would get stuck on the valves and shit. So we're just turning it, give it a few revolutions. But no, seems all good. Let's get it all back together, get some oil in it, flip the key. Yeah, throttle bodies back on, literally just getting 
everything back together then and then it'll be the valve cover with the new gasket on uh, probably going to change the spark plug seals as well because we've got some new ones so so it's just about to put the fuel rail back in and i was just about to lube up the o-rings and i'm missing one now i'm a little bit worried about where it's gone but i know it's not fell in here because they've had the head off so i'm not really that worried about that but i was worried about you know not getting another one but in this kit for some reason i think it's the head kit i got four over it well there's about six o-rings but they're pretty much perfectly the same as these ones so just going to change them all uh makes sense because god knows how old these ones are now there's a little vacuum line underneath i should have put that in first actually i almost forgot about that hopefully i can wiggle it on there that's on good so the rest of the stuff now just goes to the um valve cover so uh before i do that I'm going to just put some oil in here, just a little bit. So on the chain, cows. I did put a new uh, rocker cover gasket on this the other day, so. These are quite tough to get out. Best way I found is just to jam a pick in there. There you go. <sighs> Mate, these fucking things are a joke. Please just slice my hand open. How the fuck are you supposed to get these out? Fuck off, mate. Call packs. Right, so I've tightened up the sump plug and we will need a new one. But I only, plan, I only plan to use this all for about 10 or 20 miles anyway. So we'll just get a new one when we do that. Um, for now, that will hold oil. Um, but, as you say, the thread's fucked. So I don't plan to keep it on for a long time. But... That sump plug's back on, loosen put oil in it now and start it and then obviously order a new sump plug and then change the sump plug next time. But for now, I'm going to top up some oil, I don't know how much it takes, so I'm going to Google it. Top of the oil, start it up. Right, so it actually takes 4.8 litres, so I'm going to put, oh fucking hell, I'm going to put all this in. And then, oh, fucking hell Lee, all this in and then a, um, a little bit more, actually I'm going to clean that otherwise it's going to fucking go everywhere and stink. Right, exciting times. We have oil. Everything's put back together. I've looked around on the floor and there aren't any, I don't think I'm missing any bolts. There's a few things like a few brackets which I've not put on yet and the heat shield exactly because it's not that important. But we've got oil. We're gonna unplug the coil packs uh, and just start it, just to crank it over, just to get its oil pressure. And then we'll put in the, uh, the coil pack. So yeah, let's just do it. Okay. Coil pack is unplugged. Right, let's go. Do it a few times. Right. Coil pack's in. <laughs> Here we go. Sounded rattly at first, but I think that was just the chain flopping. The tension is gone. We're idling. Engine management light is on for something. I'm not sure why, but we'll get the scanner. Look at it. Clearing. Right, it's not got any water in, so we are going to stop it there. <laughs> now we need to go for the bleeding process. It absolutely stinks because I say there's lots of oil all over the fucking place. But. I'm happy with that. Ideally, I'm gonna clean all the underside of the engine because it's oily. I need to put that fan back on as well. Uh, and I need to put the radiator hose back on and some other things back on, ready for the coolant. But I, I am happy with that, boys. Right, so she runs. So the next test is we're gonna put water through it and make sure she still runs with water through. It starts misfiring and stuff and it starts pissing out then. We've got a problem. But, so we're just gonna use tap water for the time being. Run it through, it's all good. Uh, run it through, bleed it all through, so we're going to keep the bleed nipples open, uh, keep the heater on, full inside and stuff while it's um, bleed it while it's running. Uh, and then if it is good, then put coolant in. So, And this is good, this will flush out all the shit as well. It's kind of like doing a coolant flush. So, yeah, let's go. Right, so heater's on full. It's going to be steaming because there's been some water that's been dribbling out. But, yeah, so yeah, keep an eye on this water, make sure it's topped up. And uh, keep, keep an eye on the temperature as well. The idle is settling down as well now, which is good. 
Sounding all right. Sounding quite good. Right, guys, she's been idling probably about 20 minutes now. Uh, water's hot. It's really hot inside the car. I've had it on full blast. Uh, we're up to temperature and it's sticking at 90 degrees, which is also good. Uh, we had a little bit of water coming out the exhaust at the start. Um, but as you say, now it's not, so that was probably just um, water, the condensation was already stuck in the exhaust. So I think uh, our level is a little bit higher than we want to be, just a tiny bit higher than we want to be, but I'm going to put the cap back on, take it for a spin, uh, and yeah, let it, let it cycle through, come back, check the water, but yeah, let's go for a drive. Now I don't know whether it's a bit of just a placebo effect, but it feels like it drives way smoother and like way quieter it always did drive nice there was never an issue with how it drove but now it actually feels like it's drove the amount of miles the clock says <laughs> no but honestly it drives really nice it's super smooth the idles super quiet super soft it picks up revs nice honestly it drives really 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 nice this is so nice this would be this would be such a good daily I actually really like this car, and it's standard. Probably I'm gonna hate it when it's modified because it's gonna, it's gonna become horrible. But now, the only thing he's changing is the linkage for the gears a bit sloppy. Uh, that's literally the only thing. But it drives like a super low mileage car. Like it's, I'm not even bigging it up. Like it actually does. I literally can't explain it. Like it just feels. Like, in the low revs, it just feels so responsive. I'm not going to rag it, because obviously. But it just feels so, like, it, oh, I don't know. It's so weird. <laughs> I'm genuinely struggling to find a comparison, because most cars, obviously, it's supercharged, so it is nippy. Obviously, that's, you know, most, I, most things I drive are either NA or turbo, so you don't really get that instant sort of, you know, oh, my God. But it just feels so strong. I don't want to say it now, something be wrong in a week or so. I'm like, oh, we're well, well, strong, were it? But like, honestly, it feels fucking sick. Right, we're back at ADS. Um, right, no, nope, we're keeping temperature. Let's turn her off and let her cool down and we'll check the levels. Oh, well, we're home in the mini. She's driving great. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think we might need a coil pack. One of the engine management lights came on and I looked and it said coil pack uh, output low. So, uh, as I say, it's still driving fine. So, I just might need to grab a second hand coil pack for my guys at Mad Mod Mini. Uh, but yeah, there we go, guys. So, it's up and running. So, I hope you enjoy this content. Uh, the next thing is going to be actually modifying it and actually taking it on Brands Hatch. There's a track day in. Um, November at Brands Hatch. I'm going to be trying to get on that. I'm going to ring Track Obsession tonight and see if I can get on that. Uh, and that'll be the times where we get a baseline figure. Obviously, we're going to have some mods by then, but it's not going to be mad. Uh, hopefully, we'll just have some seats, some nice wheels. Uh, I've got some things uh, set up in terms of brakes as well, so that should be happening soon. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy the content. I really enjoyed doing this to a car. It's kind of nice to, I feel like I've got a connection with this car now. Uh, now it's just, I just need to name her. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.